please don't raise. Okay, at least it's min. If if he would have raised bigger, I would have just folded. Ah, uh, it could be queen jack. Uh, against a small race, king ten clubs, jack ten, ten nine clubs might be possible. If he jams, I'm folding. Don't think people raise something like ten eight suited or jack ten suited here on the turn. Would be a genius play. Uh the the problem I really have is I'm afraid he overplays his queen jack. Love is tomato. What are you doing to me? Welcome to today's live play. I'm going to play live cash game on Poker Stars low stakes. But before I'm going to jump into the action, I just want to make you aware that we just released our first live cash game course, Mastering Live Cash. And I just want to give you a quick overview of what you can expect in this course. Um, because WSOP is about to come soon. A lot of people want to play a lot of live cash games. And the games are very soft, so they're a little different than online. There are a lot of more exceptional situations that appear in, in life situations and our very own Raise Your Edge coaches Fallout 86, who is the flagship for cash game content on PokerStrategy.com as well as uh, Mariano5, who has been a Raise Your Edge coach now for many years and both literally destroying live cash games. And... Yeah, in this video, they're going to show you what you need to know in order to be really good at live cash games. And the main difference, as I said, is that you will play against a lot of weaker opponents. You will get into spots that are not so typical, you're not so familiar with. And we're going to give you the needed tools, the needed knowledge in order to just stay calm and um, yeah, make the best possible decisions in those spots. So from preflop, opening ranges, explaining the ranges, hand examples, and then a very common situation in live tournament uh, live cash game compared to online is that you will face a lot of limps so isolating is a huge thing in live cash game as well as over limping what to do in those situations what hands to play of course flatting three betting and four betting always explaining the theory and then of course um, illustrated with a lot of hand examples then playing from the blinds small blind strategy big blind strategy then we will also dive very deep into the post flop section so that you always know what to what to do also the course is made to give you the right instructions what to do against certain player opponents which is of course also a big thing in, in live poker so we try to consider every factor that comes into play when playing live poker and then d differentiating between playing out of position, in position, as a prefer progressor, as the caller. So most common spots are, be are covered, playing rivers and turns, playing draws, bluffing, of course, um, important in live games as well. Not as much as in online because you don't really want to bluff that much against fun players but uh, then also playing deeper and uh, lots of hand examples here so and of course the course will always be updated so new stuff is coming soon if you jump onto this course right now you will also be eligible to participate in our um, webinar that will take place in the next couple of months i think until the end of the mar uh, month end of april uh, if you join the course before end of April, then you will be eligible to also participate in our webinar. And of course, there's also an early bird discount and you will also get access to the range uh, viewer. So you know what to do when it comes to open raising, 100 big blinds and deeper, what to do against three bets, what to do um, when facing three bets or when uh, you are you have the opportunity to flat call or to three bet from different position against all different positions uh, or the most typical positions um, playing versus three bets um, so you always know what to do what hands at least in three make a lot of sense and of course in the course you will also learn um, how to react against certain opponents so that you always know how to deviate from these ranges and yeah small blind play 
um, and so on and so forth. Squeezing also, not to, of course, important, especially in live games, since there will be more caller. So you definitely want to know what kind of hands to be squeezing with. Enough talk about this course. I think it's a, it's a great course, of course, and especially for someone that would like to dive, yeah, or transist into winning player in live cash game, or you want to push your win rate. It's a great course. I think it's around $200, but you can check everything in the, we put all the links in the description. And now let's focus on some content. And in this session, I also would like to focus more on exploitative play. So um, that's why I'm going to play very much low stakes where opponents are very weak. And I try to play extremely exploitative, which will also be the most powerful weapon when it comes to playing live cash game. All right, so let's jump right into the action deck. We actually just, the very first hand, we had a very interesting hand um, where under the gun, open raises, cut off three, but it's very big. And in those situations, I'm always a big believer of if you don't know what the right play is, just play it safe, just call it, play in position. You don't necessarily need to um, yeah, make make a huge play, go broke here with queens, run to the king's so ace, just call, play post flop, and um, this three bet is too big, so I'm just gonna fold. And just call, and then small blind jams, and cut off jams as well, and we get a good price, and they can certainly have ace, king, jacks, tens, but I think the likelihood of them just having um, Aces or kings is too high, so we just let go of our queens and we avoid a big setup here, which is, of course, very, very good. Um, here, I'm just going to play straight for stacks. I'm going to raise my my trips and um, and you will see me playing on low stakes, a very simple approach. I wait for good hands. I do that every single time. Uh, here and there, there might be good spots that are very good to bluff, but in general, I'm just... Yeah, playing very straightforward. Uh, I think he has a lot of ace highs that are going to call anyway. If he has a give up, he's probably not going to call. So uh, here we can do both check back and bet. I'm, I think I'm more often want to be checking back with. He has a lot of 10x in his range. On low stakes, people might not check raising this board, but I don't really know what he's up to. So I'm, I'm, I'm playing a little bit more safer here. And then easy fold on the turn against an over bet. Here, since the most players probably don't really know, uh, don't know me or don't know how I play, I'm also going a little bit bigger with my with my value hands, or I'm timing out. <laughs> uh, ben just being too greedy. Uh, here, I definitely want to bet big with our top pair, top kicker, um, and we never know what is going to happen in this session. So I'm trying to focus on what is in my control, trying to focus the uh, to make the best possible decisions. I think betting small is the best strategy here. We want him to inv invite to make something stupid. Um, turn. The thing is, if he has an ace, he very often has a better ace. But um, yeah, I think it's a it's a turn where I definitely want to keep betting. I wouldn't mind checking back. Um, uh, maybe not with a nut flush draw, because if you have something like ace 10, we have the additional backup now of uh, the flush draw. Um, I think that a set like fives or ace five might have been, might have raced on, on one of the earlier streets. So um, ace queen is also more, like, like on low stakes, people are a bit more cautious and might be calling ace queen more often. Um, but I think, yeah, we beat a6, a7, a8, a2, a3, and we can be very certain that these hands are going to call. So we definitely want to be worried about ace king is very unlikely. Um, yeah, 20 min raises. <laughs> these are the spots that um, can be very annoying. Um, but the thing is, if he has, let's say, ace 10 or ace 5, you're supposed to lose more money. So even if he has ace five, we lost the minimum. And 
that's good. So I don't mind folding there, but if he raises his randomly his ace eight once in a while and we fold there, this would be detrimental. So it's just, it's annoying, of course. Okay, he is super short. And we can also tag him as a recreational because he's basically supposed to be raising very big there. And here I'm probably going to, he has 10 big blinds, so I'm going to ISO 3 bet him. Okay, he's calling regardless. We flop a set. Uh, I'm going to check if he has an ace, he's going to bet. Let's, uh, if he has something like king, king, queen, king, jack, I'll, I want him to spike a, a pair. And I think river, we can bet against the king now if he, have, if he has spiked the king. And he definitely, even if he's over betting, we have to call. Uh, he called with king queen off, which yes, he's performing well against our under pairs, but I think he should just be folding it preflop. Um, turn, we can bet small for protection against his ace eight offs and ace nine offs and ace tens type of hands. Um, but since he overbets, um, since he overbets the flop, uh, his range is very polarized. Uh, interesting. Um, not necessarily bad. Actually, actually, I don't mind his overbet. Uh, six four off, I would defend. Six three off, I fold. Um, definitely take a step here with my gut shot. He can have a lot of auto folds with ace jack, ace ten will really be hard for him to continue with and we can keep barreling a lot of turns. Usually I try to avoid bluffing a lot but uh, on low six, but there's certainly some good spots where I know that people's ranges are very capped. This is a flop where we definitely want to start putting a lot of money in against his um, client pressure against ace high, king high. Uh, yeah, this is too weak to open race. I'm just going to call here against the big open race. Uh, definitely just gonna call. I mean, he raises big. He keeps betting big on the flop, so there's definitely likelihood uh, he has he has a better hand. Um, but we at least call, call flop in turn. If he fires the river, we have an easy fold. And also now all his ace kings get there. No reason to bet. Uh, yeah, interesting. I think we can bet small this flop here, just against his um, ace jacks with the clubs, especially small blind calling ranges, very much uh, defined around suited hands. So he rarely has a flush draw. Um, of course, if he has ace jack, ace 10 with one club, he's calling. But let's say if he has pocket eights, pocket sixes, pocket fives without a club, he's just folding. So with a very small seabed, uh, very often does the job. Uh, this is a hand, if they're my opponents are regulars, I wouldn't mind uh, squeezing this hand. Plays very well in, in, in big pots. Uh, turn, we're gonna start betting for value. I have a weak top pair, so I don't wanna make it too big. Uh, very bad river, I'm, I'm probably just going to check fold. Ah, uh, we can also block bet small, but yeah, I don't think we get value from from tens there, especially when the the flush gets there. It's like f it's it's really hard for him to to find the appropriate amount of bluffs. Uh, this is a hand that suits very well as a three bet, regardless of the type of player you're playing against. So let's see if we're able to generate some profit in today's session. 6-5 suited against a good opponent, a good hand to 3-bet with. Of course, if you play, if you grind the stakes you're grinding, you should always have an idea who you're playing against, at least against the, the majority of players. You, you can't know everybody, but against most of the players, you should have an idea whether they're recreationals or they're regulars here. I'm definitely completely clueless um, against most players. So 
tens. Uh, on this flop, we can bet our range. That means we can um, see bet pretty much everything because we have all the aces, we have kings, we have a lot of queen eggs, a lot of nut flush draws, even tens, nines are relatively okay on this board to at least put one bet into the pot here, um, protect our hand against something like ace, jack, and hearts. Um, definitely gonna call it once a min race here. And then folding the turn, if he jams, then he just very often has a flush draw, a queen, or a seven. But he could be messing around, so I definitely want to at least call once. If someone is a proponent of folding right away, right away in the flop, then that's okay. Ace King here for me, no, regardless of the stakes, stakes I'm playing. Um, unless you play live and you know your opponent is very passive and tight, I don't mind uh, folding it. But in general, I'm just 400 big blinds, Ace King blind versus blind. I go broke no matter what. And we need a jack. Nope. Losing this flip, but it's fine. Here I'm calling once. He could be he could be betting something like Queen Jack, a flush draw. His his sizing is really weak. Um even if he has a king, king jack, king nine, king eight. Uh, we we don't perform so bad and uh, against the race I'm we can easily fold. This guy is three tabling and his sizing is uh, so he seems to be regular. This is kind of weak and ace five suited. Um, yeah, I don't think it's it's too bad to four bet with. I think all his over pairs are going to bet anyway. So I'm going for a check race here. It's it's nothing really fancy, but. He has a lot of hands that naturally want to put in some money into this pot, so his betting frequency is supposed to be really high. So, and as expected, he places his bet and uh, snap calls, so that's really good. I definitely want to keep betting the turn. I think he very often is on a on a ace high there, but if in case he has an over pair sixes, sevens, nines, tens. Um, he will be calling anyway. Um, okay, flop. This is a very big C bet. About one over card. Uh, we're in position. I'm calling once. Definitely giving up the turn. Might be okay to fold on that flop as well. Definitely. I'm definitely. Uh, I think I can also improve my game in, a, in many spots as well. Uh, this guy is regular, so I'm gonna three bet this hand. Playing a little bit more aggressive against the regulars. I think it's a great strategy also for live cash games. Play a bit more aggressively against uh, regular players because when they play these stakes, they usually play a bit more passive, a bit more tighter, a bit more cautious. Um, and against recreationals, you should be a little bit more careful. Uh, this guy is two tabling, so potentially a wreck. Uh, I think I'm still one of the three betting the sand. Um, with an additional flush draw, I, I want to put in a bet. It's an interesting flop. Our hand, I'm going to check call now. You can also check call the flop. It's whatever. You can bet, flop, check call, turn. You can uh, check flop, check call, or bet turn. I think I'm gonna go for a triple barrel. I think we have a lot of full equity against this queen x, jack x, even king x might have some problems to call down. But we also have all the ace jacks and ace tens. Actually, we want to eventually want to be triple barreling ace jack, ace ten blocking ace king is very important. Yeah, I think uh, I think I don't want to triple barrel this combo. Um, <clears throat> Because we have the ace jacks and ace tens with a very high frequency, so these are much better hands to triple barrel. 
Um, it's not so bad to put in a C bit here because let's say we check back, he bets turn, we have to call once anyway. Uh, let's see this guy here, SB months. SB months. It's a regular, so um, again, this position's. Uh, it's a definitely very close call. Don't mind folding it. <laughs> Not really our boards today. I think we can start betting on this flop and yeah, now we can go for three streets. Uh, I think on the, on the river I'm going to check call here and I'm also going to value bet the river. I think there's a lot of 10x and 8x that can call. Probably was just on the draw. And here we are. We are calling, he's a regular. And from Germany. Usually Germans play very aggressive against me. Play very aggressive against me and we call once. And if he jumps row, we have an easy fold. We have some ace checks suited, we have uh, king queens, we have some traps with aces kings. So um, yeah, raising here and if he jams we can just fold. And it's, it's really hard, there's a few maybe something ace five and hearts. Um, and against the small three bet we are calling. And I'm going to check call the turn. That's very interesting. <clears throat> that is that is uh, without backdoor flush draw. I'm just folding right away here. <clears throat> I don't know. His his pre flop sizing kind of stings a little bit, and then he snap bets the river, like. I think Queen X would very often bet something like nine, an eight, nines, tens. Uh, I don't know. It looks suspicious to me. Yeah, jacks. Okay, jacks. Jacks makes a lot of sense. Yeah, uh, jacks makes a lot of sense. Yeah, jacks and tens are very much hands that check back flop and can snap where you bet the river. And against this side, I'm just folding the flop. Um, could consider check shoving the river. Um, this is close. Probably get punished for it. Usually when you make these close opens, you get the three bit right away. Um, <coughs> Uh, I'm just calling, like, I mean, this is so small. What is he doing? Again, I'm not sure. He could be uh, trapping with aces or kings and just mess around. <coughs> trapping us. And let's just keep his range wide. And then we... And we just call down. I'm also gonna call the river. He could be overplaying a jack. Yeah. I don't think we can value jam there. He's 
queen, especially with the queen and hearts, we definitely want to be c betting. Uh, we can <coughs> we can apply a lot of pressure on a lot of ten tens, kings, hearts. The nine is not the best card. Improves his uh, some of his other pairs like pocket nines. Um, so I'm just gonna check give up here. Maybe if there is a check back and the turn is a river is a king or a ten, we could we could do something fancy. But here just just nothing we can do, and we hope to check it down here. Ace nine suited. Ah, uh, this is also really bad sizing. It's less than three x. We have position, so we're definitely going to call. <coughs> I'm gonna start with a bet here. It's it's not a hand that I mind. It's or it's a hand that I don't mind bet folding if I face a race. And uh, has a lot of potential to burn out our streets and I think he has he's a lot of ace kings ace queen type of hand so I'm gonna keep betting now for value here um and check back the river but I'd expect a lot of fold equity as well so it's more like a protection slash value bet and uh if he calls I would check back the river if I wouldn't have improved I would m most certainly follow it up on on uh, many rivers King nine suited with a lot of potential on a lot of turns. We at least call once unless he bets that big. And especially when you play pre-anti games, so you have no antis involved, um, you want to play rather tight pre-flop when it comes to open raising. Uh, this is just a fold. Uh, king king nine suited. I would definitely defend against this three bet. Uh, king eight suited is close. I'm just going to. Um, if I have like eight nine suited, jack ten suited, uh, would be much better. To. To bluff with. Uh, we don't want to be blocking his kings. The most likely hands he has. Uh, yeah. Check it down against pocket tens. Uh, we definitely want to be checking back this board also with a certain frequency because uh, we don't have so many 5x. Gonna 3 bet the king 10 suited here. Oh, it's such a hassle to always look into the lobby how many tables everyone is playing. <laughs> the insta min, three be uh, min 4 bet. Well, we got a good price. We at least have to call once. Uh, I'm gonna see right here. Not the best board fall range, but also the turns are really bad today. Uh, any ten, any queen would have been great. Uh, of course, two overs, but gonna three bet the tens here. Flatting is fine as well. Rather, I prefer playing these hands with initiative. Uh, against a 6-6 six, six squeeze, I'm just going to fold. Uh, 
That's a very dicey session today. I think I'm just going to fold another 86 big blinds to figure out that he is on queens. <laughs> it's not worth it. Or ace king. I think it's very often ace king. But if it's just frequently jacks or queens, it's just gonna punt to, to stack it off there. Yeah, sometimes you have these sessions there where you're not hitting so well, and especially live when you don't play so many hands. Um, and depending on, you know, sometimes at the beginning you have a you have a you have a sense for how the session goes, and and very often when it's not going so well, um, I immediately change my mindset towards okay, let's try to lose the minimum, let's try to somewhat make it to break even, and. Or at least really just lose the minimum. And I don't have these false expectations of, oh yeah, it should be turning around. and um, Or I at some point it will turn around. I, I, I'm not fall into this trap of having this entitlement thinking, which a lot of players fall into. So I really try to focus on what the thing what the things that i can control uh easy call here with the nines and if it turns around eventually then it's all right i actually don't mind jamming here there's already 240 in the middle he squeezes really really big um we play off, off position it's it's actually quite worth it so i'm just gonna jam here and here we have an easy call down yeah, it's very often <laughs> pocket tens, but you have pocket nine. He could even value betting eights here um, because our, our range looks so much like fives or sixes. So if you even beat a value hand, it's just very unlucky. Uh, against the min race, we have an easy call. This is for sure nothing you, you should ever do as a regular player. And some some people have been have requested why I'm not checking my results at the end of the session because it doesn't matter and I'm not gonna start doing that. Um, I even not in cash game and even not in tournaments. So I try to focus on playing good. There's a big whale in the big blind, so I'm going to six is great. Makes it less 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 likely he has sets, and we want to maximize the value against. Uh, against sevens in uh, pocket threes and pocket eights if he calls it great he pays a huge price to to draw and uh, if he folds them it's a lot of equity as well we done we deny him a significant share of the pot i'm just gonna bet very very small what all right i take it three with this one here I'm gonna bluff the river here with the sand uh, um, so yeah always try to focus on what you can control and yeah if, if things turn around then that's great we wait patiently for people to make mistake here and there taking some spots to bluff where we can sense some weakness and we're really sure it's a good bluff and get rid of like here with pocket nines that we just had like ah oh, should i forward the river like i block a fly no you can value bet ace you're like i should have probably even stepped myself on the trail it wouldn't be so bad and i'm gonna start betting the turn here it's it's, it's a really great river at uh, board for my range and he has all the queen jacks ace jacks ace tens like we make for so many better hands what the fuck is he talking trying to represent i'm really incentivized 
to I'm gonna re-raise and punt it in on the on the turn. Let's see if it works. Ah, on the river. Like I don't know. It just makes no sense to race there. It just he should never be raising there. We have all the six sevens. We have all the eight x in the world. All the boats in the world. This is definitely not a turn where you want to be raising. Even if he has the occasional check back fives or fours. These are so little combos compared to all the value hands we have. And if he now thinks he can start raising nines or tens, uh, no, not really. Okay, he could have queen 10, queen jack I think is betting the flop. He could have queen 10, makes a lot of sense. King queen doesn't make sense. And ace also doesn't really make sense to value bet against. I think he would start betting it on the turn. I think he'd go for the bluff catch. But I also feel like people are never bluffing. I mean, some like deuces and threes wants to bluff very frequently. Um, a nine or ten would have been great as a second barrel here or a diamond. Again, not the best turn card for our range. Where we couldn't start applying a lot of pressure against uh, Adex. So his Adex remains a second pair. And I'm afraid he's going to call it down too often. So... Uh, we just have to check back and give up again. Um, I think ace king is very unlikely. It's like we block king queen suited very heavily, so I think I'm gonna go for c bet here, and eventually barrel it off and second barrel against under pairs. He is a wreck, that's always good. So his range is a little bit more defined in those spots. Uh, the Skyboy guy, unfortunately, he could have... Uh, it makes the King-Queen combos even less. But he's a wreck. He can have all the under pairs that play call, call. I think I'm gonna go for it here. Oops, timed out. Why don't I have... Why am I not having? And I'm gonna jam the river. I think he will have a lot of pocket fives, sixes, eights, nines, tens in his range. Um, something like king, jack, king, ten suited. Three bets very often prevop as well, right? So I'm going to just jam the river here. Um, the way people play their range is very face up, and uh, unless he has a miracle trips, um, he very often has just jacks to. Wow, he got me up down with fives. That's why you should never bluff on low stakes. I would certainly, certainly uh, triple burrow for value, pocket queens, aces, uh, ace king, of course. I ace, squeeze king, drag king, ten suited type of fans. Um, so, of course, I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm over bluffing here. Um, if he's aware of it, then it was a great call, but you, sh you should definitely not make it such a call in low stakes. Um, and I squeeze and see bet into two people. So maybe he just wanted to be a hero here. And then he deserves the pot. I'm just going to fold here as well. I'm gonna, I face this mid donk as a check, My so I'm just gonna go for my usual sizing here. And yeah, great turn. One fifty. I think it's very obvious that he has a, a jack accent, so if we want to make him fold a jack accent and he's a wreck, then we have to bet quite big and over bet the turn. And this one worked out. Fortunately, it's more, the small bluffs work out than the big bluffs down. Um, but I'm happy um, because the way the, the combinations work in this spot, it's really hard for him to have a king. 
and I think my line looks very much like a king or an over pair or aces. Um, Reigns, this guy. If this guy is a, he's one tabling, so it seems he's a recreational, so I go for a little bit more greedier sizing. Um, that it's really hard, especially regular three bets, a lot of these king nine, king ten, king jack type of hands here in this po these positions. So it's actually good that the um, turn pairs. And I'm probably, I'm probably never. Let's see, is this, is a, is this is a regular as well. Let's say I personally wouldn't be calling down with fives. I would probably also not call the turn. Interesting turn here. I think I want to bet. I think he's. I mean, it's just ace king that beats me. He can have ace tens, ace nines. Um, and then we check back the river. He can for sure also check his aces or ace queen now on the turn. But also, again, we have one ace, so it's very unlikely for him. And uh, I think we would, we, he still has ace queen, queens, aces, ace king. So we would be, yeah, would be a little bit too greedy here. Yeah, ace king suited. Again, just running into top range. <laughs> Nothing we can do. Prefab is certainly debatable, but we're in position. Um, I'm going to check race this turn for sure. He's checking back. You should be okay. Now we bluff. I think he often has eights, sevens, a nine. Um, I think he would have shot on value here after check check. Don't need to bluff all five. Uh, very very bad boards for our range here from under the gun. Um, going for an over bet. Let's see uh, if he's a wreck. So, nope. I basically think if he has fives or if he has an ace, like ace 10, ace 9 that check back, he will, he will call anyway. And then I want to be maximizing my value. And if I'm bluffing, I would be bluffing smaller, of course very simple stuff <laughs> ace queen shooter we can squeeze for value especially now uh, yeah especially now okay this guy 8x ice race Gets really nasty when he jams. There's already 240 in the middle. He could just be incentivized to now even jam more like Jack's tens. I, it's, if one of these players jams, I think I'll be I'll be in for some YOLO. And it's very very hard when you when you constantly get these. Seven six four boards with your ace kings or seven eight nine boards when you have kings races and you have to pot control, but it's very important to try to to lose the minimum on these boards. Um yeah, we have to call this hand here. He's a wreck squeezing.
Uh, I don't mind betting, but um, the board in general gives us very little room to barrel on the turn. Against passive opponents that are not raising so much, um, it's okay, but you will also benefit from them not stabbing often enough, and then you see a turn more often enough. Um, we're very deep. I got shot back to flush draw. Definitely gonna wanna peel once this hand here. I think ace highs are very unlikely. Like, I mean, this okay. If if he's stubborn, he might be calling with ace king, right? But like eight sevens, maybe weak nine. He could be stabbing ace. I think we want to be bluffing the server here, and I really make sure that the nine is not hero calling. Um, if some of these guys picked. He he could have ace five, ace deuce, but I also expect this to be barreled, and uh, we only really represent. Yeah, he sees steps ace king. Okay, interesting. I mean, I don't well, try to make ace king to fold. I'm just calling it pre the button. Interesting. Yeah, I was thinking about raising the flop. I think it wouldn't be so bad either. Uh, nine three four. You naturally don't have so many two pairs. You don't have nine four nine three off or suited. So. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit harder for you to have really strong hands. She's eager. She's eager. Um, prefer having a heart, but I think with our gut shot, we can at least bet once. And he snap call. I think he will have a lot of floats. I'm gonna go for a second barrel. It's a good hand, especially when the flush draw bricks. He has a lot of flush draws, right? And we're not blocking any of these to triple bar out this hand. Uh, this is a fold, by the way, against this big flop sizing. I missed that. Uh, feel like I want to race. Problem is, I think he has too many two pairs in sets. Standard, very greedy now. Just gonna check for this flop. Ah, this is a very close open race here, pre ante. Great flop, great flop. I think I will even. Um, with a five ace three in diamonds, I would also mix in some over bets. Um, because against none of the gun range, you shouldn't have jack five, jack four off. But I go with start with a one third. It's a really good board for my range. I have some really strong top pairs. I have all the over pairs. I have some sets. Um, we can do some really cool things on this board. Uh, King eight suited here. Uh, it's usually a fold. And yeah, I'm just gonna fold. Definitely gonna start betting here, protecting my hand. Also, okay, he's just placed 27 bigs. Um, also want to start betting here. If he raises, I don't mind. Again, lots of natural forts in his range, like king queens, king drags. Uh, without back to flush draw. Um, I 
especially off suited. Ah, maybe against the small sizing he peels, but like deuces, threes. Can't really continue on the sport. We have a gutter, an overcard to the seven, so it should be fine as a bet. Ah, this is an open. I thought it's check seven off. I just realized it's check nine off. A little bit lower. Should would have been better. Hope it goes check check and then we can bluff the river. I think that's that's a great run out. This should be, unless he rivered a seven or an eight, I think we get a lot of forwards. Six X could be in his range as well. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, lines. Ace eight, I'm just gonna check back. We definitely wanna catch the river. It's a very good run out. Uh, and we're going to forward here. Wow, he's not betting the turn. So much equity. Okay, let's make sure that we're not timing out. This guy is a recreational, so I really like him. Yeah, I think we have to go with it here. Uh, how are we falling? Are we falling? Uh, we got him in with Queen Jack. That's great. I think. I don't know. I mean, you see the fancy stuff like piano. Where is he? Piano. He's one tabling. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I have a bad feeling. I think if he has jacks, tens, people just call. So it's really literally just queens plus, ace, king plus, and we're not performing so well against that. So, um, I think when this guy saw my snap call blocking the ace of diamonds, he was pretty sure I have a set or um, or nothing. Um, here, I'm just calling. I mean, we're going to go broke anyway, right? So like 100 big blinds, okay, 120 big blinds, eight queens, button versus cutoff. We're like, we're not really afraid. So, but I want to keep his range wide. Like if he has ace king, we're flipping post flop anyway. Um, I can get away from from setups when he let's say has, um, when he has when he hits his ace or king, if the if if the board is a uh, is is let's say it's an uh, it's it's nine high, um, one second I need to clear my thoughts what I want to do here actually uh, if I just want to call or jam, um, we're in position I think I just want to call. And let him bluff whatever his flush draws and then on the turn we get it in like if you have the plan to get it in on the river and you still have an over pair because or you you want to get it in if the board is not a high or king high then uh that's a bit of an overplay i think i mean it's not it's not that bad like tense <sighs> I, I think I'm frequently falling tense, to be honest. I think maybe he thinks I'm very aggressive. I'm a calling. I mean, I can be a calling station, right? As you've seen, don't get me wrong. I definitely want, don't want to judge it as good or bad. Like, I personally would play it different. Let's say it this way. Um, I think I would just call it pre-flop. Like, oh, we are what, 140 bigs deep. 
I don't want to get in 140 bigs with Jax, to be honest. I think that's a little bit too loose. So yeah, he, of course he will very often show up with aces or kings, but there are certain rules when you play against regulars that if you have ace, king, blind versus blind, 100 big blinds, you go broke. If you have queens and uh, you decide to just call the four bet and the board is a nine high, you have to go broke. Um, there is just the likelihood if someone spazzes out, there's already so much money in the middle. If someone decides to overplay his jacks, tens, it's just too much money involved into the pot. If you, you really need a strong read, this guy is the is very passive and very, very tight, then I would fold. What is this guy doing here? <laughs> Again, this is um, stuff you will also see in live games. So I will re-raise because I, I think it's just weak. It's just something like ace 10 or it's a very strong hand and then I will get away from it. So I will re-raise. If he just calls, I keep barreling. If he re-raises, re I'm folding. But I think it just has ace 10 or ace 9 that just wants to raise for information. Uh, just a fishy play, I would say. Um, this guy called four bets. Um, called four bets me. Scoozy. check back and now we can value bet the river uh, I mean he can certainly have ace king king and hearts but he could also have something like uh, pocket jacks with one heart pocket tens with one heart and I think they're always calling so we can definitely size it up a bit bigger he has a lot of very natural calls in his range and if he jams I'm just folding like don't really see them ever bluffing here. Uh, we could also turn something like he bets very small. So if we have something like jacks or tens without a heart, we could turn or we supposed to turn these hands into a bluff. Um, this guy's the huge calling. So I'm going to go for a limb three bet. Um, This is a good card for our range. Um, yeah. Against min race, I think it's fine. What the fuck? Uh, this is just the problem where I think he would have continued barreling a lot of clubs the only hand i see is ace five and clubs to be honest um because he has so much footage against the fa a six or against the four so i'm just calling here if he has seven yeah se okay seven six and clubs makes out also a lot of sense actually seven six, six but they always have it i think it's also good proof i better pay the money for you guys that you see they always have it they always have it and you can learn from my mistakes here. Yeah, actually, seven six in clubs. Why didn't I see that? Yeah, seven six clubs. It's seven six in clubs. A six in clubs. Not sure if that is opening. Uh, this is a hand that actually performs very well in a squeeze pot. I prefer calling this hand than queen jack suited. Why? Because they have a lot of queens, jacks, ace, queen, aces, kings that blocks a lot of outs. This hand is much fresher and much cleaner against both ranges. Uh, I'm falling here. 36 bigs. Uh, 38 bigs. Um, yeah, and we also have all the flushes in the world, so... Yeah, yeah, it's it's actually a fault, man. Just so stupid. Because we have all the... Usually people don't have the balls. Like, he's supposed to turn something like 
ace king ace jack with one club into a bluff and yeah most people don't do it uh it's usually a fold let's say if you now have a lot of calling stations behind this is a hand that i wouldn't mind uh, open limping oh yeah here i'm just going all in i think it's the most profitable play um we have some outs against ASI flush draws. Of course, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just checking here. My, my gadget is not strong enough. If, if it checks again, I'm going to bet this for sure. But Calling once here with my bottom pair. I actually don't mind raising against his 8-9s, 10-9s. And if he has an ace, we have 5 outs. I'm actually going to protection raise my... Uh, my 4-3 it's, it's never a bad thing to raise your bottom pairs where your opponent can have a lot of overcards come on, it was just to say all in just go all in, just just put it in there um, easy call here with the ace-10 off I'm going to peel the 6-5, it's a bit loose against the 2.5x um Okay, here we have to make sure we're not timing out once again. Uh, I think I should have started betting this. Like my 10 high is flush draw doesn't feel strong enough. I think his bluffs would have also started betting earlier. Kuvaru. Um, I think it's fine to bet with uh, some decent backdoor equity so we can always call a race and I think I'm also going to um, bet the turn here um, if he's slow playing an overpair which can definitely be the case he can still have jack 10 suited 10 9 suited um, and even as if he has jacks ace 10 king we have a lot of equity uh, he can have some like ace king and clubs that we charge and we can always call a race unless he jams uh, and but unless he yeah unless he jams exactly and uh here we're just squeezing and now we check back aces interesting okay and here i think we just go three streets for value start with a small bet it's good to have the aces here because we block ace 10 suited, which is a very significant part of his um, of his range. And we just yeah bet the turn and then we shove the river. If he jams the turn, I really hate my life. And this is a really great river. I mean, king, jack and clubs gets there, but might also be raising on earth streets. He has all the ace queens, which we block king, queen, queen, jack. Um... So we just jam here. And we get maximum payout from Ace Queen. And here we just call down. What? What is happening right now? Yeah, we're getting some presence here. That's what we were waiting for patiently the entire session. Uh, I think it's a good illustration for lower stakes. Um, there's not not so much fancy play going on. You see that I'm applying very, um, very exploitative strategies. And uh, here and there, of course, you can see that my stubborn GTO stuff comes through and I try to make some bluffs. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Uh, Raza. <laughs> Actually, a high stakes crusher uh, in, in tournaments. Not sure why he's playing here. Maybe just practicing his post flop skills. Uh, I think this hand comes to Ken's three bet. Um, in, in theory, he, he's supposed to call down this hand. Don't get me wrong. Um, 
I th here blind versus blind is the only position where you want to be very aggressive against ch uh, limbs. Um, I'm going to second bar this turn. I think you will have a lot of ace high floats. And we're going to continue second bar this turn here. We need only very little for deck. This is a great river. Um, Yeah, he has some 5-4s, 3-4s suited, deuce 4 suited, pocket 4s, pocket 6s. Uh, very often the queen um, going for an overbet. Um, this is too close. It's... Man, it's a tough call. It's a tough call. Uh, for 150 bags, I definitely need some... Like King Jacks, for sure, I can be tripling that are not blocking hard, like King Jack Diamond, oh, even King Jack gets there. What am I talking about? Um, <laughs> I I need, or, or something like Jack Nine, Eight Nine suited, Jack Nine suited, something like Ace King, Ace King, I need to be triple barreling, probably with a certain frequency. Um, yeah, it's a very tough spot. I think you guys should always fold against unknowns. Maybe I would be sometimes, if I'm a good mood, creative enough to find bluffs, but I think even against me, I would folding ace queen here on the river. Um, where I always like to, you know, find the right amount of bluffs when it makes sense where now that people have a decent folding range. So this spot, I know that he's probably not calling jacks twice, so his range is very heavily weighted towards queen x, and he knows he has jack 10 suited some 10 9 suited he has queen maybe some queen 10 suited um yeah i mean now on the river uh it's also you also feel like very much price in right less than half pot but he needs to pay seven dollars into twenty four dollars, um, so he needs to be good around uh, twenty five percent of the time. <sighs> Dear God, what I be calling there? I don't know. I I would be probably falling to be honest. <laughs> I feel I feel really sorry for him because it's a really nasty spot. It's always a good spot to overbet here because even if you let's say fold his three deuce, you fold out five outs. If he continues wants to call his eight x or deuce x, he's paying the price. And I don't mind his folding his his uh, his jack eight where he thinks, oh, he's too strong. I'm gonna fold. Like, well, great, you fold an overcard and an eight, uh, which is a significant part of the pot. And I make him constantly fold his 10, 15, 20 percent equity. Um, with the jack and clubs, I'm going to bet. And now we have three streets of value. Please don't raise. Okay, at least it's min. If if he would have raised bigger, I would have just folded. Ah, uh, could be queen jack. Uh, against a small raise, king ten clubs, jack ten, ten nine clubs might be possible. If he jams, I'm folding. Don't think people raise something like 10 8 suited or jack 10 suited here on the turn. Would be a genius play. Uh, the, the problem I really have is I'm afraid he overplays his queen jack. Love is tomato. What are you doing to me? I think it's just the right play in the long term. <clears throat> he could also suddenly wake up with jacks. <laughs> oh. 
All right, then I would say we slowly wrap it up. And I think this session beautifully illustrates how important it is to just really focus on the things that are in your control and making good decisions, playing patient. And I mean, of course, you know, you never know what happens in those sessions, especially when I record live. And I'm really happy that we turn it around and we're just waiting for people to make mistakes. Uh, easy call here. Zunelnikov. Um, I'm going to race here with my flash draw. I knock out some equity from him. So if he, let's say, has ace-jack, ace-10, he has to fold. He can have weaker flush draws. Um, the only the only thing I'm afraid of is that he has um, queen-8 off. Uh, not flush draws. Uh, yeah, not flush draw. But against everything else, we just we always have 40%, plus some fold equity on the flop. And he might get in something like... Um, um, something like 6-7 in hearts or jack-10, 10-9, 10-8 uh, flush draws, jack high flush draws, queen high flush draws. So it's always good to, to fast play your stronger draws. And when people uh, decide to yeah, fast play their draws, you are you're in a much better shape. So let's say if I have 10-9 in diamonds, I would just call, try to hit my flush draw and then get in some money on, on later streets. If I want to play for stacks, I always do it with strong draws. I'm going to check back here, get some I um, think he has a lot of ace eights, ace seven suited type of fans. Ace jack could be possible. Um, we go for some thin value here, and I'm slowly going to sit out now. I think he has a lot of queen x. I don't really don't hope he raises me. I really hope be happy for a small bet. I um, think it's often ace, king, ace, queen. I don't mind raising, to be honest. If he checks, I'm going to bet. If he bets small again, I'm going to raise this time because then he just tries to... Um, yeah, it looks like he doesn't really know, know what to do with ace, king, ace, queen. Or he has jacks and tries to make an insane trap on me. Yeah, I'm definitely going to raise here. Little Paris. <clears throat> I definitely now want to overtake the initiative and um, get him off ace king, ace queen. And this kind of sucks, but I'm definitely going to bet the river as well. It's just his line looks so weak. And he might have better flush drawers, like ace high clubs, king high clubs. So, um, we don't we don't really represent a lot because we're not we were not raising the uh, flop. But I don't really care that much. Very often, recreationists don't think that far back. They only now see the hand and try to put the puzzle together. Um, actually, when he has some, what the fuck? He either has jacks <laughs> or he's bluffing with a flush draw, with a better flush draw. Ah, oh, come on. Let's not punt it off. It was a good session. Thank you guys for watching. I know you would have laughed now seeing me getting over, going over the top and try to make him fold his, I don't know, not flush draw, king high flush draw. Wouldn't be too bad because actually the... What we risk in order to win is very, very, um, very, very good. So it doesn't need to work out a lot, actually. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions about the course, join our Discord. Feel free to reach out. And if you have questions about any topics talked about, addressed in this in this video here, feel free to reach out, join our Discord, and then stay strong, crush at the tables, and see you guys next time. Ciao.